With the introduction of Fortuna, we finally got our hands on kit guns, and with kit guns came an absolutely outstanding chamber called Catch Moon. Hey guys, hello and welcome back. As always, my name is Lazar, and today we're going to be diving deeper into the secondary weapon. I'm going to be giving you some build options when it comes to building your gun, but also a couple of builds for it. Something cheap and affordable, something anybody can build, but of course, also a souped up setup with a ribbon. That being said though, please keep in mind that my builds and guides follow a new player friendly approach. Simply because there's a lot of info here and I want anybody watching to understand how the weapon functions and how it should be built. So if you're a veteran of the game and you already know most of this stuff, please bear with me. And with that out of the way, let's jump into the catch moon. Now first things first, let's build the blasted thing, shall we? The chamber of course is gonna be catch moon. As for the grip, there are two good options. Love tap and we're gonna be setting up really quick something so we can preview gilded so we can see the changes in real time. For example, you can do something like this, then right click a component as you can see and you can see the stats difference. When it comes to this one, I would 100% recommend you go for Haymaker. As you can see, it deals a lot more damage, but the Love Tap will uh, provide a slightly better fire rate and it will have slightly better range. However, the combination between Catch Moon and Haymaker will grant you 40 meters worth of range, 4-0. And considering how the projectile works from the Catch Moon, you can't really make a lot of use out of more than that anyway and we'll talk about that just a tad later. From my point of view, the ideal combination, no questions about it, is going to be Catch Moon together with Haymaker. As for the loader, this is kind of when it gets tricky. Let's talk about a popular option, Kill Stream, 35% crit chance with 2.3x crit multi. Unfortunately, this combination leaves you with only 11% status chance. Now, considering how slow the weapon fires and how much damage it does, you want it to crit. So, first and foremost, get that high critical chance. Here is one that I built gilded and format and everything, zipline, this is my first catch moon with 28% crit and 17% status chance. I didn't want to completely forego status chance because when you're talking about higher level content, if you can't apply some statuses to the target, whether it be through hunter munitions or through the weapons innate status chance and so on and so forth, then you're not really gonna do all that well when it comes to heavily armored targets. But if you guys just want to do level 50, 60, 70s and so on and so forth, then forget about status altogether and go for maximum crit. And this this worked out quite nicely. Now Zipline has only 5 magazine but a super quick reload with 0.9 seconds. And I went for this one because I still have flashbacks from the Arca Plasmor super long reload speed and that was a bit of an issue. Now after some testing what I liked about this one was the synergy with Arcane Awakening. It was absolutely bloody fantastic but there is one option that from my point of view is just simply flat out better. You're gonna be losing some status chance but you're not gonna go down to 11%, you're gonna go to 13% so you don't have to completely forego the status chance while maintaining a 35% crit chance with a 2.3x crit multi. And from my point of view this is currently the ideal catch moon. So once again it's going to be catch moon with haymaker and splat. Now off to the simulacrum. Now a quick look at how the catch moon functions. As you probably know by now, this is a Arcaplasmor like projectile, but it doesn't fully act like the Arcaplasmor. And as you can see, you got 14 meters worth of range when it comes to the projectile. And once again, this is Haymaker together with Catch Moon. The rate of fire, as you can see, is not exactly fantastic, but the weapon will deal a truck and a half worth of damage. Now, there is one major issue with the Catch Moon. The projectile will detonate on contact with a surface or an enemy. The explosion itself is only, well, bits and bobs. It doesn't do any actual damage to the enemy, so bear that one in mind. Now, the problem is, and I'm gonna have to spawn some targets for that, is that the Arca Plasmor never really had this issue in the sense that it looks like it detonates on contact with something but it keeps traveling and damages the targets and that doesn't really happen with the Catch Moon. For example, I can do this, yeah? It detonates on contact and unfortunately I'm not hitting my targets but the Arca Plasmor see that? It looks like it detonates on contact but it keeps traveling through and damages the targets. Which is why it was so easy playing with the Arca Plasmor from mission to mission when you're shooting down like tight corridors and all whatnot. That was not an issue for the Arca. 
However, in gameplay, everyday missions outside of open zones, such as, I don't know, the Plains of Eidolon or, uh, or Valis, I had a lot of trouble in small rooms just because you would hit a railway, trying to hit a small enemy or something like that, and the projectile would detonate on the ground, on the wall, on the ceiling, whatever, because it's not exactly small, and it will deal no damage. So bear that one in mind. You gotta aim for open spaces with the Catch Moon. Now let's jump into stats to see precisely what we're dealing with. You guys already know the stats, I showed it to you earlier. So again, fantastic critical chance with a 2.3x crit multi, absolutely bloody beautiful. The status chance is as high as we can get while maintaining the maximum amount of crit we can get. And we got impact and heat on the weapon. And as you saw there, as you probably know, the weapon kind of generates a lot of impact procs. And we got a Riven Disposition of 3 out of 5, which is the default Riven Dispo that the developer awards to each and every new weapon. Now, if your mod capacity is only 30 out of 30, jump into Actions and install the Auto King Catalyst. This one can be found from Alerts, Invasions, or, if you're lucky, from the Daily Sortie. And you can also pay 20 plat to have one installed. My kit gun has been formatted a total of 5 times, but this was done only for the purpose of testing and because I have a Riven. When you guys guild a kit gun, you're gonna be able to choose one polarity for your weapon. I recommend you use a V and then simply add 3 more V symbols to the weapon. Now for the sake of saving a little bit of time because these kit gun reviews can drag on way too long, I already have a standard build ready for you guys. So we got mandatory mods with Hornet Strike and Barrel Diffusion, of course damage and multi shot, lethal torrent 100% on this one. As you saw there, in a combination such as this, the weapon can be a little bit sluggish but lethal torrent completely fixes that. And this is not a beam weapon, although it may appear like one and multi shot will be increasing your shot status chance as you will be firing multiple projectiles. Critical chance and critical damage is a must on the catch moon, so pistol gambit together with target cracker. Initially, we're gonna be using the standard versions of the mods because not everybody has prime versions, but if you guys have them, prime pistol gambit and prime target cracker, go straight for them. Next, elemental damage, and elemental damage should always be applied depending on circumstances. In this case, I'm gonna be shooting Corrupted Heavy Gunners level 120, and against them, the ideal elemental combo is going to be Corrosive. So that's why I made Corrosive with Pistol Pestilence and Jolt, 60-60 mods. From these two, this one can be a fair bit expensive, because only Battle Kittier brings it every couple of months. From the trade chat, I believe it's about 70-80 plat currently on PC, if you don't have Jolt. If you don't wanna spend the money for it, then you can simply drop it and replace it with Convulsion. This will chump away at your status chance is not exactly ideal when it comes to higher level content. For lower level content, I wouldn't even use the 60-60 mods. I'm talking about level 50, 60, 70, something like that. As for my option slot, the last slot on the weapon, I'm gonna go with Hydraulic Crossers. Now, this is a fantastic mod and you guys can farm it from Lua Spy Missions. Link in the cards right now. And it will push my weapon to 117-ish percent critical chance, which is absolutely bloody glorious. Arcane, yes, there are free arcanes you can use and I'm gonna highlight this one in the Riven build because currently it's a bit hard to get in the sense that it costs a lot of plat to buy it directly and also you're gonna need a lot of standing that, let's be honest, not a lot of people have right now. So Corrupted Heavy Gunners level 120 and I'm also gonna be spawning some Corpus units as well from Orvalis. Now I don't normally test versus Corpus because they're a bunch of wimps and they can be taken out of a fight rather easily. But if you guys wanna see them, here you go. You can make basically any weapon look good versus Corpus. Basically those guys got one shot it. Corrupted Heavy Gunners however are a different story because of the huge amount of armor they have on. Which is one of the reasons I didn't wanna completely forego the status chance on the catch mode. So as you can see, it does deal a truck and a half worth of damage and I'm not using any fancy mod mods at all. The Catch Moon currently from my point of view is one of the strongest secondary weapons in the game. Don't get me wrong, not necessarily for single target. For single target damage, you can get weapons that pack a much greater punch. However, when it comes to AoE, this is absolutely bloody fantastic and I love the weapon. Now that's performance with standard everyday mods, but we can do a whole lot better than that and I'm gonna be switching to a pump up setup, of course with prime mods, a Riven and Pack Seeker are free. This is a Catch Moon Vizican with damage and multi shot. It's good. It's a good roll, but it's not ideal. What you want, from my point of view, is critical chance up to level 100, 100% crit chance, and then try to focus on critical damage. So the ideal catch moon Riven would be something like critical damage, critical chance, multi-shot, and a harmless negative. 
Pack Seeker is absolutely bloody awesome. It's an on kill effect, so there is that, but it will deal a troc and a half worth of damage. It will take the critical chance from your weapon, and it's 50% puncture and 50% uh, slash. So the projectiles from this one will be able to apply slash. They kind of look like the projectiles from the Phantasma, so bear that one in mind. Alright, let's respawn these guys and let's see what a souped up setup can do. Take a look. Now that is a whole lot better than before. And on kill shot, there's the projectiles absolutely murdering it. One shot the corpus. Take a look at the health on this guy. I didn't hit him. That's a slash from Pack Seeker. Again, try to get this arcane prior number one from my point of view when it comes to whatever Radzad sells. I love this weapon. It is absolutely fantastic. Just keep in mind that my opinion is so subjective because I love the Arca Plasmor. Always did, it's still my favorite shotgun in the game by far. So of course I was gonna be loving the catch moon as well. Well guys, there's still one more thing left to do. How much damage can I get out of this if I play on Warframe buffs? And I'm gonna be switching to an actual build for Mirage, there we go. I'm not even gonna use Pistol Lamp or any Aura to increase the damage. You can do that as well if you so desire. But from my point of view, the weapon doesn't really need it. You can use Corrosive Projection against Grenier, but keep in mind an Amp Aura such as Pistol Lamp will grant its benefit regardless of the target. For example, if you're doing stuff on Orvalis. When it comes to Arcanes, we're gonna be using Arcane Precision, 120% extra damage to pistols, 80% chance on headshot, about 80-ish plat currently from the trade chat. And our second Arcane is going to be Arcane Awakening, once again in general, uh, this weapon synergizes very well with something like Zipline, then you're gonna be getting a lot of uptime from Arcane Awakening. Overall, from my point of view, it's not worth building Zipline just for Arcane Awakening, but with these two up, I'm gonna be getting 220% extra damage. So we're going to be spawning these guys, unpause the AI, and of course activate Mirage's buffs. Her free ability and her first ability. Now let's see what this can do. As you can see, that is just, it's just freaking glorious. It can tear through high level targets like there's no tomorrow. The amount of damage this thing does is just bloody insane. It's on par with the Arca Plasmor for the most part. Of course, Corpus units are a non-threat. Look at that, two free shots to take out the level 120 Corrupted Heavy Gunner. I cannot recommend this weapon enough. With the mention that yes, I am being a little bit subjective because I do love the Arca Blast more and therefore I love this one as well. In actual gameplay scenarios, however, it can be a little bit annoying when it comes to the... Um when it comes to the projectile detonating early and you not being able to deal damage to a target. Honestly, that got annoying kind of quickly, but there you go, there are some limitations to the weapon. It's easy to get headshots, of course, you just simply aim well above the head. And that's pretty much it for the Catch Moon review. As always, my name has been Lazar. Thank you guys so much for watching. Like, favorite, share, and subscribe if you enjoy the content. If you have any feedback for me, then by all means, leave it in the comment section down below. Now, I can't exactly promise you that it will be done by next time or even within a week because these things take a bit of time, but I will be reading for each and every comment. You can also find me on Twitch, Facebook, Twitter, all the usual places. Until next time, guys. Bye-bye.